Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Reed. I am the director of Bridgewater State University Senior College. Thank you so much for being here for part two of our fall faculty showcase for the fall semester of senior college. Um, the format of today's event is I will offer a brief introduction, very brief, um, to what senior college is, and then we'll just jump right into our fall faculty showcase where each faculty member who's here today, and thank you to those of you that are here, will give a brief introduction um, to who they are, and maybe they could say why they participate in senior college, if um, they're a returning instructor, and if you're new, maybe you can say something that you're looking forward to about being part of our community. And then if you could explain um, a little bit about your class, maybe what participants could expect to learn in your course and the format of your course is always helpful. So whether it's lecture or discussion or a mix of both, um, that's, that's always very helpful. So, um, uh, the Senior College at Bridgewater State University started in the fall of 2019. It is a lifelong learning program for older adults. It's learning for the sake of learning, for enrichment and enjoyment. There's no tests, no grades, no papers. So it's all the great parts of being part of a university community without any of the pressure. Um, so you don't have to write any papers or um, have any mandatory assignments. Of course, with that said, a lot of our classes do have um, uh, content that you can absorb or take part in outside of the class. So you'll look at the course description and see there might be, um, it might be a book club or a course on literature or poetry or a writing class. So in those courses, of course, your experience will be enhanced if you do the reading for that class, but no one will be um, quizzing you in any way. Um, senior college, uh, our instructors are from uh, within the Bridgewater State University community. So we use full-time faculty, we use part-time faculty, we even use some staff, professional staff members. And then we also have great instructors from outside of the community. So we have folks who we've just met through networking and maybe they teach at another college or university, or perhaps they were a retired educator or they were a member of senior college and they um, you know, have a real passion and uh, ability to uh, share their knowledge with our community. So our instructors are a mix of um, you know, folks from within the community of Bridgewater State and then with uh, from outside of the community. Um, it's only $85 to join. That entitles you to take as many classes as you like for no extra fees. And that's true. I know sometimes people are confused by that because it seems too good to be true, but I promise it is true. And that makes us the most affordable lifelong learning program in Massachusetts. Um, I get a lot of emails from other lifelong learning programs I like to keep an eye on and, you know, get some good ideas from. And I noticed today I got an email from one in New Hampshire and you know, I was looking at their course catalog. It was just re uh, released today. And it, the way their format works is it's $50 a class. Um, and you get like a $10 discount if you take more than four classes. So right away, I mean, it's just amazing how um, incredibly affordable our program is. The other part of um, our program is we have a scholarship program. So anyone that um, lets me know that they need a scholarship can have one and that's um, supported by the university and that's a service to our community that's really important to us. So you can just let me know. Also, if you're 90 or over, you can have a lifetime membership to senior college. So if you know of anyone in that category, perhaps a parent, or an aunt or a neighbor or anyone in your life, um, please send them my way. If you're coming to an in-person class, bring them. You know, if you have someone in that in that um, age bracket, just let me know and we'd be happy to have them. Um, we offer classes that are both in-person and also on Zoom. So Zoom is like we're here in this format right now. It's similar to how we're talking um, in this moment. And so you just get a link and you log on every week. And then we also have classes that are in person and the in-person classes take place at Bridgewater State University in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, the Bridgewater Senior Center, the Bridgewater Public Library. Thank you to the, our partners there. And then also at the Center for Active Living in Plymouth. We have a great partnership in the town of Plymouth. And we also have in-person classes at in the town of Easton at Frothingham or Thro Frothington. 
I forget, um, Hall, but we would let you know if you signed it up for a course in Easton. So if you know of anyone near or around those communities, please do spread the word about those in-person learning opportunities. Okay. So um, I'm, I gave the abbreviated version tonight because I know a lot of you um, have uh, know a lot about senior college. You probably give the spiel yourselves by now that you've heard me say it so much, but please do look on our website, which I will put in the chat um, and for more information. The best thing to do is to read, um, uh, to download a couple of uh, shortcuts that we put on our website. One is our quick glance schedule, and that's a handy document that has a list, a simple list of all the classes and their dates and times. We also have a full course catalog that gives a lot more details, course descriptions, and bios from our instructors. So check us out on the website for that. Okay, so I see um, we have Nan, we have Fedor, um, and Ron, I'm just making sure we have, um, so yeah, we just have, oh, and Pat too. Um, so we have four instructors here tonight. So um, I'd like to get started um, a little differently than we normally do. I'm gonna start with Nan um, and I'm gonna offer a couple of comments. So the, the really the true joy of my professional life um, the, these past four years that we've been in senior college is reading the feedback that we get on our instructors from all of our members. Um, our members are very clear with me and their enthusiasm for certain instructors. So if you're new to senior college and you see, oh boy, this Nan person is offering three courses a semester. What's up with that? That's because our members demand that of me and they would go and protest on the quad to President Clark if I didn't bring Nan back every single semester. Um, so I just wanna offer a few comments from our members about Nan. One member said, I can never say enough good about Nan's classes. She spends so much time preparing because I have taken a myriad of notes with all she has to offer. A solid following of students attend all classes she teaches and many friendships have developed as a result that has built a trust for sharing in the classes. Another member said, I always enjoy Nan's classes. She has, a knack, she has the knack for encouraging, but also nicely limiting the amount of participation by us students. She's always well prepared. I look forward to my fall classes with her. And then another commenter, commenter said, Nan is my absolute favorite instructor. So Nan, I hope that gives you a little warmth in your heart tonight. And we'd love to hear more from you today about what you will be offering with us this fall. Well, thank you so much for the comments, although now I'm kind of embarrassed, um, but, but thank you. Um, and it's great to see some familiar faces already. I will be offering three classes again this fall, plus their book group or book club is returning. So the classes um, that I'll be offering are The Great Depression from Hooverville's to the New Deal. It's a six week class meeting on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. And all of my classes are on Zoom. Uh, partly because I initially was going to do classes in Attleboro and then the pandemic hit. So we went on Zoom and we ended up with, you know, such a nice group. I, I wanted to, to stay on Zoom. But anyway, that one will be on Tuesday and it will run for six weeks, followed by um, hoaxes and conspiracies. And this is a continuation of one I did about a year ago. And we didn't really run out of time, but there's still so many more hoaxes and conspiracies. So it will be everything from like 5G chips in your COVID vaccinations to, you know, some of the things we're, we're reading about right now. So it's fun. Um, both of those are done primarily lecture, but we stop often enough for people to comment and, and have a, have some class discussion. And um, I'm pretty laid back. Again, there's, there's no, um, as Jen was saying, no exams or assigned reading or anything. But that one will run the same time slot and beginning in, let me see here, I wrote it down. Um, it, it starts, I wanna say October 24th, I think. It's on the schedule and it will run through mid-December, but we will not meet the week of Thanksgiving. I think most classes don't meet that week. Um, then one of my all-time favorites, I talked to Jen about this, I guess about two years or so ago now, is the political discussion group. And I've had people say, how on earth, why would you do that? And we have some 
friendly but nice rules. Um, people are allowed to disagree, and trust me, in this, <laughs> in these times, we do disagree. But everybody is committed to staying friendly and polite with each other. So we listen to each other. And I, I almost wanted to open a secret class this summer because there has been so much we could have talked about. But we'll pick it up again in the fall, and that's a twelve-week class. Goes um, starts, I believe, about the. It, it meets on Wednesdays at 10, 10 to 11.20. I'm sorry. Yeah, 10 to 11.20. And um, that runs all the way through starting in mid-September through December with just the Wednesday before Thanksgiving taken off. We The format for that is I usually short show a very short video. And then um, I find videos work better than having everybody read a couple of paragraphs about something usually in the news. And then we go from there. We go into small groups. Then you, in case you're not familiar with that, you can do that on Zoom. And then we come back and share in the big group. I like the idea of the small groups because people often, especially if they're even a tad bit shy, might feel uncomfortable talking in a large group. But with three or four others, it works out very nicely. And so we, we have plenty to talk about this fall. Just keep up with the news if you're interested and, and you'll enjoy that. That class is not recorded. Um, I think that sometimes people share very, you know, private things. And so we're not recording that one. Um, and then finally, I have the book club. And that was something else that we talked about um, about a year ago, a few people brought it up. And I, again, I asked Jen, is would there be any interest? And we ended up with a waiting list. So we will meet just three times because even if you love to read, meeting every week and discussing another book would be hard. Um, so we'll, we'll meet once in, uh, I think it's early October, once in November, and once the final one is on Pearl, on Pearl Harbor Day, um, December 7th. And we'll discuss three books over the course of that, a book each month. So um, I, I love teaching in this program. I, it's, I also, I just love teaching in general. I've been teaching for a lot of years, but there's just nothing better than the senior college. Oh, Nan, thank you so much. Um, I also think it's time and for maybe you to for you to repeat some of those classes you know like your class on the 60s and the 70s i know those were incredibly popular so as we start to you know uh, have new members come into the program you know we could even talk about you repeating some of those great classes you know that you've offered in the past so um, thank you so much for all your engagement and um, being with us in senior college you're an important part of our program thank you thank you um, and to all the instructors, you're welcome to scoot out after you're done. You don't don't feel obligated to stay the whole the whole time. And if anyone has any specific questions for the instructors, you can always just reach out to me, and I'd be happy to um, reach out to them on your behalf. Um, okay. So up next we have Ron Reynolds, and so uh, Ron, like Nan, has been with Senior College for several years. Um, he actually joined as a member when we first began, and then I got to know Ron and find out about all his extensive background as an educator. So I'd like to um, share a couple of comments that I've received from Ron's course last semester, which was on, Ron, can you tell me, the, would you remember the title of your class last semester? Um, one class was introduction to um, improving your digital images. It was the, it's the comments from the other class, the Eastern Newfoundland or something like that. Oh, that was the uh, travel log on Eastern Canada. Eastern Canada. Okay, great. Yes. So um, here are some of the comments that I got from uh, on that. Ron Reynolds is a is one of the most delightful instructors I've encountered. His knowledge and his willingness to share is incredible. I only wish it was a real live class trip, but it truly was the next best thing. He includes amazing, incredible details and photography about Eastern Canada. This was a delight. Anything Mr. Reynolds prepares is first class. Thank you. Another commenter said, um, his photography and beautiful was beautiful and his knowledge about each area was also so interesting. He often added a wonderful sense of humor into his commentary. I thoroughly enjoyed traveling with Ron. So Ron, um, this is and literally, I mean, with both Ron and Nan, I had like pages and pages of glowing commentary and I just picked a few um, that highlights. Um, first, you know, there, um, the, the, 
ease by which you interact with senior college members, but also your extensive knowledge and your, your uh, ability to be so well prepared. So Ron, I'll hand it over. We're excited to hear what you'll be doing with us this semester. Well, I've certainly enjoyed this the last few years. It's nice teaching adults who actually want to be here. And I know many of my students, while I was still teaching, say he should have stayed retired. <laughs> But they have to take tests, and they don't like that, and they don't like the grades they get. And that's the nice thing here. People are here just to learn. You don't have to test to make sure that they're keeping up with things. It's a wonderful group of people. At times, I, too, would like to meet in person, and yet this has worked out well in the virtual world. And uh, I'll be teaching two classes this semester. Uh, both meet on Friday mornings from 9.30 to 10.50. And the first course will be a sequel to one that I ran last spring, uh, which was the Improving Your Digital Images. And I, don't, I can't remember the exact title, but it's something to the effect of advancing your photography. And what I, I'm planning to do is to try to set up the class so that if someone didn't take the course last spring, they can still come into the class and gain from it. What I'm planning to do in the first session probably is review some of the fundamentals of of what makes a good image and even people who took it last spring have probably forgotten much of that so i think it'll be time well spent and it, there'll be a lot of interaction in this course because what i'm planning is uh, i'd like to have people submit pictures that we as a group can critique and we found last year that people were very, very nice about their comments. It was constructive criticism. And uh, I really appreciate that because sometimes uh, critiquing images, some people are tactless and they can be very harsh. But I didn't find that to be the case here. And uh, it, it was really, really helpful. I think you can learn an awful lot from image studies, looking at pictures people have taken. Uh, what do you like about it? Uh, what things do you think you could do to make the image even better? And um, in the process, um, I'm going to show um, how to take some of your images and improve them with software such as Photoshop Elements. That's one I use as something called Photoshop, which we don't need unless you're a professional. It's far too expensive and complicated for the average person and you don't need it. Photoshop Elements, if someone has it, is very simple. And I wanna showcase some of the nice things you can do with it. It's pretty nifty, some of the stunts you can pull and take an image which might be average and make it beautiful. And uh, the class will be set up so that even though some people are taking pictures with smartphones, um, they'll be fine with it. And of course, those who have true dedicated cameras uh, can also get some wonderful images too. And particularly I'm focusing on uh, two different kinds of pictures. One, a lot of us are fortunate enough to have grandchildren. I wish I were one of those people. <laughs> That's been the one disappointment with my sons. We never had grandchildren and it's not going to happen. The baby just turned 55, so I don't think we can expect that. But um, many of us want to take pictures of family. And then of course is travel. Many of us are still able to travel and have the freedom to do it. And it's nice to be able to bring back memories of your trip and just sometimes look back at your pictures and see them. I know in my own case, uh, I don't print any of my pictures. I look at them all on a screen. And what I've done is to uh, use software where I can make a musical slideshow and just sit down and watch old family pictures or old vacation pictures and watch the pictures go by and enjoy the music. And it sure beats a lot of what's on television. Now, the second course is going to be essentially um, looking at the West. It'll be a travelogue. I've been very fortunate to have had the, to have had the chance to travel ex intensively throughout the West. Uh, 
For one thing, I had a son who had a uh, job assignment in Henderson, Nevada, which for five years gave me the opportunity to get a lot of inexpensive vacations because I could go out and stay with him and use his house as a home base. And we have probably at this point visited every national park in the West. And they are wonderful. Unfortunately, some of these wonderful national parks are being loved to death. So though I'm going to take some time looking at gems like Yellowstone and Yosemite and all, um, I want to spend a lot of time looking at perhaps hidden things in the West. There are some wonderful state parks and then a few national parks that are not well known and I want to showcase them. And some of these places are gorgeous. If you look at the virtual image I have behind me, this is one of the places we'll visit. It's in Eastern Washington in a part of the country they call the Palouse. And essentially it was desert. But after Grand Coulee Dam was built, they were able to use the water for irrigation and they've turned it into essentially our breadbasket. Weed is grown widely out there. In this case, you're looking at a field of canola. And it's, it's very pretty, isn't it? And uh, so I want to look at a lot of those things. And this class, too, um, will have it very open. People can pop in at any time. I have found the adults seem to know the right moment to pop in, and they don't break the chain of thought. So you can ask questions or ask, offer comments. And in, in both cases, I welcome student input. And the classes will meet on Friday mornings from 9.30, I believe, until 10.50. You got it. That's actually the correct time. And that second class is called Exploring the Wonders of the Western United States, a virtual travel log. Yes. So uh, pack your bags, get your your affairs in order because you're going to be on a wonderful adventure with Ron and Ron, thank you so much for coming back and for um, engaging with us and always being such an important part of senior college. Well, I'm happy to do it. I've had a good time doing this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And probably most of those good comments you, you got might've been ones I submitted. <laughs> no, it's a secure process. <laughs> oh, all right. No, you wouldn't be that creative to write all those glowing comments about yourself. <laughs> okay, so um, next up, we have a new to senior college, but not new to Bridgewater St State University um, uh, instructor, uh, Fedor. Am I pronouncing your first name uh, correctly? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. You got it. So it's interesting, um, when I when we started senior college in the fall of 2019, there were, you know, obviously certain academic disciplines that I worked really hard to try to engage with. And criminal justice, um, which he is a professor in that department, I, I tried really hard. So and I haven't I hadn't had luck until we uh, connected. And so I'm so excited to have our first uh, faculty member from the Department of Criminal Justice here with us to offer a class in senior college. And we hope this will be the beginning of uh, lots of other engagement from you and, and maybe other members of your department. I think what happens is once a faculty member teaches with senior college and they end up having getting more out of it than they put into it and such a great experience um, with this intergenerational learning process that um, usually they end up staying and spreading the word. So I hope that that will be your experience and we'd love to hear a little bit more about who you are and what your class is about that you'll offer with us this fall and welcome. Hello, uh, thank you for that introduction, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I actually posted um, advertisement for senior college uh, once you guys took me in and a lot of other CGA professors liked it on Facebook. So hopefully uh, we can get uh, some more people. We are pretty busy because we're the third largest uh, department on campus and we have a graduate program as well. So uh, they certainly keep us busy. Uh, as Jennifer said, my uh, full name is uh, Fyodor uh, Gostyev, but almost everybody calls me Fed. I shortened it long time ago. I'll get to the origin of the foreign name. Uh, let me say I am so excited. Um, I've been kind of salivating over joining you guys for so long and finally decided to dip my toes in. 
Uh, and I already have thoughts for additional classes I can do for you guys that I think will be really, uh, uh, really engaging. And I want to say I might have to drop into Nan's uh, Great Depression course because I'm a big history buff. So, you know, I'd love to learn history. And Ron's course sounds really interesting. I put it in the chat, but I was actually just on a sabbatical in the spring and my wife and I uh, took our two elderly dogs and a camper all the way across country to California. Uh, so we just both worked on the road, but we got to visit 21 national parks, mostly in southeast, um, uh, I'm sorry, southwestern uh, United States. Uh, and also we visited a lot of civil rights uh, sites in down south uh, over the months. And I am uh, honestly, I I'm not classically trained, but I love photography. So I pride myself on taking good pictures and I make home movies and all that. So Ron, I may be stopping by your class because maybe we'll compare some of the pictures and videos. And I have a drone, so I also do drone photography. Anyway, uh, on, to, on to the class. So again, I'm so excited. So my class is called uh, Justice for Immigrants. Uh, it's gonna be on Zoom, 100% on Zoom. Um, so the way this is going to be set up is uh, we're going to, so the class is going to roughly break into two parts. I still kind of have to look at how many weeks I have you guys for, because uh, immigration is uh, obviously a hotly debated and there's a lot of sort of emotions involved topic. But once you put sort of the noise aside, it's fascinating. So the historical uh, roots of immigration in America are uh, just incredibly interesting to anybody who loves history. It, it inter intertwines with so many sort of classical themes in American history, from civil rights to labor movements, uh, you know, you basically name it. And uh, so basically we're gonna start with the first few classes being a little bit luxury because uh, I always tell my students, um, uh, uh, that before we can get into any reasonable discussion of immigration, we have to look at history. So much of current fighting and bitter feelings about disagreements about immigration in America, I think stem from not appreciating the historical context. Um, and I'll especially emphasize sort of the political currents and the econo economic currents. So one of my subspecialties is economic sociology. So I'm going to definitely emphasize economics, but it's going to be nice engaging um, um, uh, sort of tour of the history. And then the latter part of the course is each session, I'm going to throw at you a real published uh, immigration reform proposal uh, American immigration reform proposal, right? Uh, there's lots of things people disagree about on immigration. One thing that everybody is in agreement about is that the current system that traces itself back to uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson signing the uh, Hart Seller Act at the foot of Statue of Liberty in 1965. So our current system um, was built in 1965, essentially. And so we're going to look at different proposals uh, by both academics and uh, politicians. Uh, we're going to try to take a range of everything from um, rather harsh uh, and restrictive um, proposals on immigration to uh, much more open than what we have now where immigration will run a lot more like in the IRS department. Uh, and so we'll see how many weeks, again, I have to look at how many weeks I have you for so we can look at a, a proposal in each week and have a more of a discussion rather than uh, me lecturing at you. Um, each week I am going to have a suggested reading. It's going to be very easy to access. I'm going to use Padlet that's gonna, that is as user-friendly online as possible. And worst comes to worst, I can always email you the document. Uh, you will not be required to read it. It's just going to be a little bit more interesting if you do. Um, and I also have an idea. I will share it when we start the class for people who don't have time to read for a particular week, how you can still kind of get up to date on what the reading said and sort of get uh, engaged. Um, just two more things. I know we're supposed to limit to five minutes. Um, about my foreign name, so I'm actually, if you look at my biography, uh, I am a 
ethnic Russian immigrant from Ukraine. Uh, more precisely, I'm from Crimea, which is the region that was annexed by Putin in uh, 2016. Uh, I still have um, family in both Crimea, Russia, and Ukraine. Uh, so if we wanted to take a um, uh, one of the lectures and just talk about my experience of being an immigrant from there and how that sort of uh, figures into the current war in Ukraine and the political context. I am very open, and I think, uh, again, I don't want to brag, but I think my my journey to America is very interesting. I'm, I'm in a number of ways different from most immigrants who come to America. I sort of lived longer in the United States at this point. So uh, last year's 4th of July was my 20 years in America. So I've been here longer than uh, back home. But if we wanted to take a detour and sort of talk about that situation, uh, my immigration experience, I'm more than welcome uh, to do that. And finally, again, another thing we can consider, we don't have to do it, but I'm teaching a senior uh, seminar on immigration that's very similar to this. So we could explore potentially doing a crossover with my undergrads on this, and that would be so uh, fascinating for everybody, except for we probably would have to uh, basically schedule the time that works for them rather than us because you know kids these days they don't show up doing <laughs> do anything um so we can explore that option but basically we're going to start with history immigration then consider immigration proposal so it's going to be a mix of lecture and uh discussion thank you Bed, I think I can speak for probably everyone. Yes to hearing more about your personal story and your family back in Ukraine and your 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 whole situation with that. I think that would be incredibly compelling to our members. And then yes to the uh, 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 partnership or meeting where between um, our members and your class. I mean, this is the that this would be exactly why we have senior college and I'd love to see more of that. So um, I would love if we can arrange that and if I can be of any help in making both of those things happen, um, please do let me know. I'd be happy to help coordinate. So thank you so much. We look forward to that. How exciting. See, I bet you there was a lot of you that looked past his class and now you're like, oh no, now I have to add another class to my schedule. <laughs> Incredible, thank you. Okay, so um, Pat, now I know you were at the last Invo session. Are you here tonight as a participant or are you here to give your plug again for your class, Pat Kane? You're, you're on mute. No, uh, Jennifer, I was not at the first one. Oh, okay, my, my mistake. Oh, I'm, I'm confusing you with another instructor. My apologies, so uh, Pat. Pat, um, welcome. We're so glad to have you at Senior College. Pat is new to our, our program, fairly new in my understanding to our area. Um, we connected through her daughter-in-law, Cindy Kane, who works here at Bridgewater State University in our provost's office. And she's a, um, a wonderful colleague of mine who I uh, really respect and appreciate quite a bit. So I'm thrilled to have met you through her and would love to hear more now about your, your class that you plan on offering this fall. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And I want to start by saying I, I really I'm new to I came I'm a, I'm an expat from New Jersey, uh, and I'm new to Massachusetts. We moved here just a year ago, but I really feel honored uh, and privileged to be invited to be a part of this program. I'm very impressed with the work that you do at Bridgewater University. Um, I've been in the field of education uh, since 1956. And I've taught everything from preschool to graduate school. But it was in 1997 that I was introduced to Jinshin Jitsu. And it is that uh, my respect and my enthusiasm for that art that I hope to share in the classes that I'll be giving and teach some of the tools that have been helpful to me and to my family. And, with, and, and I want to tell you something a little about Jin Shin Jitsu. It's not well known, uh, but it's becoming more well known. Um, it's an energy art that is addresses body, mind, and spirit energy and how to balance it. And I would say, what would you say if I told you that just by gently holding your fingers, you could address 144,000 functions in your body? Now, you'd probably roll your eyes and say, right, 
And, and I wouldn't blame you because there's so much on social media and the media that promise quick fixes and simple solutions and things like that. It's nothing like that. But taking your own body, uh, the, the energy of your own body is like using jumper cables. It, you take the, 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 you clamp the cable and you let the wires do the, to the battery and you let the wires do the rest. But it's important that the battery and the wires be clear and well charged. Now, your body is a massive interconnection of messages that are constantly sending messages of healing, of growth, of wholeness to all parts of your body. And they start at the core and extend out to the extremities and out into your fingers and down into your toes. So by, by using your fingers as jumper cables, you can facilitate that. And I'd like to give an example of something like that that happened in our own family. It was 18 years ago, my husband had a heart attack. Now, I, it was a weekend when I was away and uh, he said that he felt a tightness in his chest. So he went to bed that night holding his little finger. And the next morning, the tightness did not go away. So he called the doctor and he was told to go immediately to the hospital, which he did. He drove himself to the hospital holding his little finger. Well, I came back as quickly as I could. And at the end of that day, he had four stents in his arteries, but suffered no damage to his heart. And he still holds his little finger. And in 18 years, he has not had another uh, coronary incident. Now, we're not just physical body. We're just not just bones and flesh and blood. We have another energetic body called our etheric body. And that too starts in the core and extends out, but it goes beyond our body. And that field of energy is what makes us more fully, fully human. That it contains our thoughts, our imagination, our convictions, our beliefs our attitudes, our biases, all of those things. And that those messages are being received and given constantly during the day, during our day. And they can either send messages of wholeness and simplicity and serenity, or sometimes they can block the energy, call tension in our bodies, and in doing that can cause dis-ease. And the, the work of Jin Shin Jitsu is holding the fingers, but also in the course, what I will teach is holding different parts of your body, like jumper cables, to keep that energy flowing uh, for, a, for wholeness, for, to, in, to increase your, um, uh, your immune system, and for a sense of well being. It's not a quick fix, it's not a silver bullet. I'm not making any promises. Your body knows what it needs. Uh, your true self knows what it needs. And it's in, in, in applying that, it can at least, at the very least, provide a sense of relaxation uh, in your body. And I use it frequently on myself to go to sleep at night. Now, it's not in any way a substitute for medication or for um, anything that a doctor tells you. I learned it at Morristown Medical Center in New Jersey. And there they have what they call an integrated uh, program where the, um, we have, there's Reiki, there's yoga, and yoga is the one that's closest to Jin Shin Jitsu. So if you do yoga, this is like a continuation of it. But the doctors there, it was very slow in starting uh, because they were skeptical, but the doctors today even put on the charts that they want one of our practitioners to go to the patients who are going to undergo surgery, especially with the cardio and the cancer patients because they recognize that it reduces blood pressure and in many cases it reduces, well, definitely anxiety, but also pain. And one of my teachers told me, she said she had a patient that even asked for self-help uh, program that she could take home with her. 
So it's those tools that I want to show in the course, which is going to be held. Um, it starts October 24th. That's on Tuesday morning, no, Tuesday afternoon from 2.30 to 3.50. And it goes for five weeks uh, through November, again, skipping the, the uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, we don't meet on that week. But I, I would like to show how you can help yourself. Uh, I had I had students. Oh, Pat, Pat, honey, Pat Pat. sorry. I just want to. Um, I'm mindful of the time and that we do have two more instructors. So okay. and let let's uh, let's leave them wanting more and want to sit and explore with you in the class. So um, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll. Not at all. No, I'm a storyteller. You have to, sh and I'm Irish, so you have to shut me up. <laughs> Got it. I get it. I'm Irish too. Uh, so thank you so much. I think uh, this sounds like a interesting exploration and um, we're thrilled to have you. And again, please, um, if you haven't already, consider signing up for Pat's course and welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, so up next we have, um, let's see, we have John Winters. So John, um, he did come to the first uh, info session. So John, uh, I'll leave it to you to just sort of give a, a real highlight, quick trip. You know, we want to get people uh, moving and not keep people too long, but we'd love to hear your, you've been back with us many times. You're an incredibly popular instructor. And so welcome back and let's hear what you will be offering with us this fall. Thank you. Um, and hi, everyone. Um, my name is John Winters, and uh, I'm offering uh, actually four uh, classes. You don't have to take them all. You can take one. You can take them all, whatever. Um, starting September 5th, they're all on Zoom. And they are about, um, we're going to be reading and studying and discussing the uh, America's um, carceral system. Uh, we're going to be reading books about uh, prison, about uh, inmates uh, and their lives. We're going to read about current issues in uh, the prison industrial complex, as it's called. Um, I'm not a criminal justice professor. I'm really a teacher of English and uh, and I and a writer. And I'm uh, I currently teach in the Rhode Island prison system. And I'm going to be drawing on that experience to facilitate these classes. These classes that I teach are usually based around books, and I uh, really just facilitate uh, the the uh, discussions by um, organizing things, of course, but also giving some ideas and things to think about and discuss. And uh, there's a lot to discuss. I've learned a lot about uh, over the past five years of teaching in a prison, and um, it's not easy. Um, I like it a lot, but, you know, issues come up all the time. Um, how do I balance the idea of helping, trying to help these uh, young men and women? And some of them are older, too, actually. Um, how am I, you know, I'm trying to, to, to help them get an education and get good time off so they can be released early, but hopefully have a degree or at least get started on their education so they do not come back in to prison. Um, recidivism rates uh, drop sharply for uh, uh, inmates that have been uh, had some education while behind bars. So, but yet we also got to think of the victim, don't we? And we also have to think. Sometimes we have to think of the crime. I mean, uh, murder is one thing. I get along pretty well with the murderers, but what about sexual crimes? Is that a compulsion? What happens if I'm sitting with a mother who's uh, the, uh, there's a guy who um, did something to their child and she says, oh, that's good. You're, you're, you're helping them get out sooner. What do I say to that? So there's a lot of conflicts, a lot of issues and uh, a lot of things going on in the criminal justice system now uh, that we can talk about. And, um, and I'll be putting these questions forward. I think there'll be some interesting discussions. We're going to read the uh, big books, including the, uh, this one, the granddaddy of them all, 18, 66 crime and punishment dostoevsky we've got some angela davis on tap we've got some uh the new jim crow all these uh books and we'll look at uh you know we'll look at both sides of the issue if you're pro punishment i want to hear from you join the class um and uh we'll probably have a lot of gray areas but we'll have a lot of good discussions i think and we're going to read a lot of great books including um short stories by orwell and uh by uh kafka about uh punishment so I'd love to have you aboard. We start September 5th and uh, we do six weeks and um, a lot of reading, a lot of discussion, a lot of thinking. And I thank you for your time. 
John, I'm getting such a kick. I don't know if you came in, you came in a little late, but um, one of our instructors this semester is Fed and he's a professor of criminal justice here at Bridgewater. So I see mm -hmm. him like enthusiastically shaking his head. You were speaking his scholarly language and his expertise in so many ways. So um, I, I love that. I hope that maybe some- Also some Dostoevsky and I have the same first name. Oh. That's how it's supposed to be spelled. Very cool. Okay. We, 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 we may need we may need you as a guest here uh, for this because, like I say, I may have some experience, but I'm I'm no expert. Um, but a lot of the books will be will be written by experts. So I'm nothing too dry. We're not no Foucault. No one they told me no Foucault. I've already been warned. But uh, a lot of it's very general reading, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Great, we're thrilled. So it's actually two courses. They're two six week courses. So it's. Um, reading about jail and justice and more part one, which is six weeks, and then part two, which is six weeks. So um, thanks so much, John. I, I know thank that um, people will have a, a, a important, great time in your course. No, thank you. um, and last but certainly not least is um, James Kirkalde. Um, James has been with us um, like Nan and Ron for quite a long time. And James, I wanna offer just a couple of comments um, that our members have shared with me about you in previous a previous course. Um, one of our members recently said, this was my second course with Jim. He's a great teacher, knowledgeable, well-prepared, engaging, relaxed, and fun. His approach to art history inspires appreci appreciation and deeper understanding. The supplementary, supplementary materials have been outstanding. I'm truly grateful to BSU Senior College for facilitating this kind of course. Another commenter said, super course, art history laced with political and religious history stitched together with humor and insight. Good balance between how to look at art with an analysis of the works themselves. So our members say it all. We're thrilled to have you back, Jim. And we'd love to hear uh, briefly, just we have like less than five minutes about what you have up on the, on the schedule this fall. And just don't forget to unmute yourself. Do first of all, I should make make a confession. I wrote those recommendations. So, anyways, but anyways, um, I'm rotating uh, three courses on art: uh, Renaissance to the Romantic movement, and then the second one. Not all the same term, of course. Um, the second one is uh, the Impressionists to Picasso in the 1930s, and the last one is modern art. So, um, this year, uh, on starting on the 17th, I'll be in Plymouth doing the second course. Okay, and um, then I'll be doing uh, later, starting all over again in Easton on the 10th of uh, 20, I think it's the 23rd of October, and that's with the Renaissance. So see how I'm cycling through and I'm using all three locations as well. Now in Bridgewater, I'm, I'm still doing art, but I'm kind of uh, being more specific. It's a, the Victorian age, seems to be a lot of interest in, uh, you know, 19th century Britain these days. And it's gonna focus on mostly cultural history about their dances, about their homes, and especially the art, obviously. And because their art was very different, they went a different direction than the Impressionists, for example, in France. And uh, and all of and as before, I'll have just enough philosophy and history to tie the whole thing together. So I'll be in three locations, uh, a moving target. But um, if you, by the way, if you didn't go to the Renaissance to Romantic movement, doesn't mean you can't uh, just jump right in with the Impressionists, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I love what you've been um, doing with Senior College and sort of offering um, courses in a series, but that they can be jumped in on any time. And um, you are really um, such an important part of our in-person offerings um, and the engagement that comes from you being in person is really um, very valuable to our members. So we're so thrilled that we have you and that you're willing to travel to all three of our locations. Um, a lot of so fun. That yeah, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, so everyone, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this uh, faculty session. If we could just give a hand to our instructors and we look forward to seeing you in the fall in classes and I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll stay on for a few minutes. If anyone has any specific questions about senior college, I'll be here. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.